Welcome to the starting points area in Shakespeare's words. In the book, we call this a language companion because it contains additional information about Shakespeare's language. Frequently encountered words lists a hundred of the most commonly used glossary words. It's a helpful guide to beginners. Scroll down to see the complete list. Use the back arrow to return to the list of options, or of course you can click on starting points at the top. Topics shows many aspects of Shakespeare's language. Click on one of the headings to see the content. Click on money, for instance, and up come all the money terms in Shakespeare. If you want to see the context where these terms are used, there's an example from one of the plays. So here's Obelus, for instance, turning up in its first folio version and in the modern version. Click the back arrow to go back to money if you want to see more examples. And again, to see the topics, click on starting points to go to the next box, which are themes. Themes shows encyclopedic information about Shakespeare's time, as well as his use of English dialects and foreign languages. So click on one of these to see the list. Or well, Helen Deed, for instance, click on the play if you want to see the example of where it turns up. And there it is. Back to days and dates, back to list of themes, on to the next box, which is act and scene lengths. You see a complete listing there, but if you want to see them in alphabetical order, all, all's well, for instance, you click on play, and then all the other plays are down below. You click on act, you see all the acts grouped together, all the act fives, for instance, and then act fours below and so on. Click on scene and you'll see all the scenes grouped together. Of course, there are blanks at the top because there are cases like choruses in Henry V and so on, which aren't included in the scene count as such. Here are all the scene ones together, scene twos below and so on. Click on lines and you see them in descending order here. Click on lines again, you see them in ascending order. Click on words, descending order and ascending order. Back to starting points and we go to all characters by part size. This will take a moment or two to load because it's a very large file. And the reason for that will become obvious when you see the list because here's the character name, Hamlet for instance, Iago, click on Iago and it will come all the lines that Iago says in the play. So the original text, first folio in this case over on the left and the modern text a little further over. Click the back arrow to go back to where we were. Click on play name now and up will come all the scenes, all the characters in the scenes of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Click on one of these, the bottom for instance, and it will take you to his lines as before. If you click on the play name, notice, it will take you to the first point in the play where the character says his first line, bottom in this particular case. Back to starting points, and the remaining box is a list of all the Shakespeare books by the two of us with a link to a relevant retail site. Happy searching. Back to the home page by clicking on the portrait. If you'd like to take out a ticket to carry on using the site, you can do that by clicking on the account button in the top menu. We hope you'll enjoy your exploration of Shakespeare's words. Mm -hmm.